Good morning. Welcome. My name is Glenn Kersey. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church Valley View. Uh, glad you're with us. If you would please check in on the Facebook app or there on your computer, whatever it may be. I uh, would love to see who all is kind of with us this morning. My prayer is that God would use this to reach more people than we could even fit inside this building. I'm glad you're with us. We're going to get started this morning here in just a second. I, I'm going to share a message and that's going to be our time together this morning. But let's begin this morning as we pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being right here today. Lead and guide. Father, I pray that you would speak through me, that your words would be clear, that the message of life and hope through Jesus Christ would be undeniable. It would, it would resound in the hearts of the people who are listening, watching today. Father, we remember those that are on the front lines in this, the healthcare workers and doctors, nurses, all of them. Father, we pray your hand of protection on them. Father, those that have already contracted the disease and are dealing with it, we pray your hand of healing. Uh, Father, we pray for a, a sense of, of peace, of hope that can only be found in you. Father, and I thank you for hearts that are ready to receive your love and life and salvation through Jesus Christ. Father, and I thank you for those that are ready to, to help and to reach out and to truly be the church in this time. Father, thank you again for the love that we know through Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, as we find ourselves in the middle of a, of a world that we have never been in before, there are so many directions that our minds and hearts could go. This morning, I want to encourage us to take the path of hope and not heartache, of peace and not panic, of faith and not fear. When I was thinking about and, and praying about uh, at the death of a, of a dear sister of mine, uh, sister in Christ, my mind recalled the story of, of Jesus and his disciples in the midst of a storm on the Sea of Galilee. I shared some of this uh, with those that were at her funeral Monday and God impressed on my heart to share this message with you today. It's found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, beginning in verse 35, where Mark writes, That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a pillow. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And in relation to all that has happened to the world over the last few months and to us and our, our personal worlds that have changed dramatically over the last couple of days, I want to share a few observations from this passage here in Mark chapter 4. Observation number one, sometimes the storm surprises. us. Mark begins this passage by saying, that day when evening came. That day. That day when the squall came up, it started as just another day. It was just another day of Jesus teaching by the lake. No one knew that a storm was coming that day. It was a surprise. Now, maybe I was behind the curve, but two weeks ago, I never saw this coming. I never saw anything like the state of affairs that we live in today with disaster declarations and executive orders. Sometimes the storms of life surprise us. Now, maybe there were others out there who knew and saw something like this coming. I think most of us were surprised and certainly surprised at the way that it has unfolded and the way that we have responded to this. Whereas like today, we find ourselves almost in a state of lockdown here in, in the state of Texas. We have an executive order that says, you know, no groups over 10 uh, over the, until April the 3rd. 
And we're just going to have to see how that plays out. But uh, sometimes the storms of life, they, they surprise us. Uh, second observation is that sometimes it's the saints who are in the storms. So who was it in this passage from Mark? Who was it that was caught in the storm? Jesus and his disciples. We're talking about the big guys. Even they were not immune to the storms of life. You, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you find yourself in the midst of this right now, you're not immune. A relationship with Jesus Christ does not make you immune to the storms of life. They're going to come. Your relationship with Christ does not exempt you from the storms. Saints, followers of Jesus Christ, all we find ourselves in the midst of this storm. And observation number three, sometimes the storms of life are severe. How do we know that the storm referred to here in Mark chapter four was severe? Well, we can kind of draw that conclusion because the guys in the boat, most of them anyway, they were part of families that had grown up on this lake fishing for a living. They themselves were probably fishermen who had used this lake and been on this lake to fish for a living. They had been out in the midst of storms before. They knew what the storms were like on this lake. And yet this was a storm in which they thought they were going to die. Obviously, this storm was severe. Needless to say, the storm that we find ourselves currently in is definitely severe. This storm contains sickness and death, cancellations, shutdowns, layoffs, depleted savings and retirement accounts, and the days and months ahead will continue to be difficult, will continue to be severe for many, if not most of us. And sometimes the storms of life were severe. The disciples on that lake, they thought they were going to die. Severe storm. Absolutely, where we find ourselves today in the midst of a, a severe storm. And sometimes, fourth observation from this passage, sometimes it seems or it appears that Jesus doesn't care that we're in the storm. We're told that the disciples thought they were going to die. And that at the same time, Jesus was in the stern asleep on a cushion. Verse 38. They thought he didn't care. How do we know that? Well, right there, continuing in verse 38. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And in the midst of our storms, Jesus may seem that way to us. Jesus may seem to have left us to fend for ourselves when we need him most. I've heard that from some of you. Where is he? Where's God in the midst of all of this? And to be honest, there have been times in the storms of my life when I have felt alone and uncared for. That's where the disciples were that day in the boat. It seemed like they were on their own, that they were about to drown. It seemed that way, but that is not the truth. It wasn't the truth in that situation, and it isn't the truth in our situation. The truth is found in this final observation from this passage. The truth is, Jesus is right there with you. And he, he is the one that can speak true peace to you in the midst of your storm. If you'll let him. First of all, Jesus reminds us that, I mean, Mark reminds us that Jesus was right there with him all the time. Jesus was in the stern. There in verse 38. Jesus was in the storm with them. In this storm today, have you ever considered that truth? As the storm swirls around you, have you ever considered that Jesus is in the storm with you right now? Right now. 
He will never leave or forsake you. He promised to be with his followers always, even to the end of the world. He is with you. Claim his presence. Rest in his presence. Now, another thing that we, we see is that he is the only one who can bring true peace. We find that in verses 39 and 40. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He, Jesus, was the only one who could bring true peace in the midst of this storm. Did you notice he didn't take them out of the storm? He quieted the storm that they were in. Jesus may not take you out of the storm. And you have to be, you and I, we have to be okay with that. But he will stay right there with us. And Jesus is the only one who can bring true peace, who can quiet the storms of life that we find ourselves in. I hope that that is your confidence today. Now, there's also an interesting fact in this story that we often pass over when we read it. But in verse 36, Mark writes, there were also other boats with him. It reminds me that the severe storms we sometimes find ourselves in don't only affect us, but they affect those around us. And when Jesus speaks calm in our storms, friends, we aren't the only ones who can find peace. As we recognize and live out of Jesus' love, out of his presence, out of his peace in the midst of the storm, the people around us can know his peace, his presence, his love, and the hope that only comes from him. As they see that lived out in us. As we find ourselves in the midst of a storm, unlike anything any of us have ever been through before, fear, panic, selfishness, loneliness, misery, depression can grip our hearts and minds. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have to work together to see that that doesn't happen to us. I ask you today to do what the New Testament tells us to do. Let's all cast our cares upon him, Jesus, because he cares for us. Now, I could stand here today and, and tell you that that's what I do regularly and consistently, and, and that'd be true. But very often, if I'm honest, I, I will cast all my cares, but I'll leave the line attached. And over the course of time, I'll reel back in that fear, that uncertainty, that concern, and I'll find myself carrying them all by myself once again. Today, let's commit together to not do that. Let's commit today each and every one of us, that we will cast our cares upon him, the only one who truly loves us, the one who can bring true peace to our hearts and lives. And let's cut the line. Let's cut the line. Let's trust him to be true to his word when he tells us that he will always be with us, no matter what. If you feel that you are in the boat, in the midst of the storm, all by yourself, call on Jesus. If you have never done that and you want to do that today, call me. My number's on this page. Call me. I will share with you the truth of this one who loves you, who gave himself for you, so that you could have a life that can never be taken away from you as he forgives your sins and he gives you new life. Let me know. If you know someone who loves Jesus, call them, talk to them. Do it today. As we wrap up today, I want to share the words of a song that I've listened to repeatedly since this, well, since I got serious about it about a week ago. This was a, a song that got me through my time with cancer and it's getting me through this time today. And so I want to end our time together with this and we'll pray. Hold it all together. Everybody needs you strong. But, 
Life hits you out of nowhere and, and barely leaves you holding on. And when you're tired of fighting, chained by your control, there's freedom in surrender. Lay it down. Let it go. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. God's on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. Just be held. If your eyes are on the storm, you'll wonder if I love you still. But if your eyes are on the cross, you'll know I always have and I always will. And not a tear is wasted. In time, you'll understand. God's painting beauty with the ashes. Your life is in his hands. So, when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. God's on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. Lift your hands. Lift your eyes. In the storm is where you'll find me. And where you are, I'll hold your heart. I'll hold your hand. Come to me. Find your rest in the arms of the God who won't let go. So, when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. God's on his throne. Stop holding on and just be held. What does Jesus tell us? He says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Your hope, your peace is in him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for everyone that's a part of this today. I pray that your message of of hope, of life, of peace is clear. And Father, I, I pray that Holy Spirit has moved in the hearts and lives of many to change them. And maybe someone today says, I need this God who can call my storm. I want this Jesus to be in charge of my life. Father, if that has happened, we are so thankful And Father, I pray that they would reach out to someone near them that's going to help them to understand and to begin, continue that journey. Father, I pray for those uh, that are homebound. Father, that we as a church would continue to reach out to them. Thank you for how you've used us already. Many that I've heard the stories from that have already been used to, to take groceries to or to pick up prescriptions for others. Father, help us continue to be ready to do that. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being right here with us. Help us to see your hand, your heart in the midst of this storm as we give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen.